Thank you so much. Appreciate that, Josh Letterman. Well, joining me now is California Congressman Ted Lieu, a Democratic member of the House Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committees. He's also a member of the Congressional Gun Violence Prevention Task Force and a good friend to us. I'm glad to have you here. On the economy, sir, let's talk about something I mentioned in the last hour, that gas station in Northern California, not your district, I should say, but it is charging nearly $10 a gallon this weekend, 960 to be specific. That is more than $3 above the state average of 630. And California's average remains well above the national one. That's now at 482 for a regular gallon of gas. But your constituents may not be paying 960, but they're paying a lot. So what are they telling you about this? And is there any way in the foreseeable future that these prices can be brought down? Uh, thank you, Alex, for your question. Gas prices are too high. It's hurting families across America, including families in my district. We have inflation worldwide, and certainly the United States is not immune from inflation. However, we have to take certain steps to reduce gas prices. So if you look at these prices, one of the reasons is because of price gouging by oil companies. And last month, the House passed a price gouging bill to the Senate. It was Democrats voting for it, Republicans voting against it. I urge the Senate to pass that bill. It's going to give the Federal Trade Commission additional authority to go after oil companies that engage in price gouging. And I also support, in the short term, President Biden's decision to release barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Yeah. OK, let's talk about uh, the House Judiciary Committee having voted this week to advance measures to strengthen gun laws. But this deep partisan divide on the issue clearly evident in debate before this vote. Take a look at this, everyone. You say it's too soon to take action? Too soon, my friends? What the hell are you waiting for? This bill is just another Democrat attack on the Second Amendment, and it's likely just the start. Where is their outrage over the slaughter of 19 fourth graders and their two teachers? Here's a gun I carry every single day to protect myself, my family, my wife, my home. This gun would be banned. I hope the, gun, the gun is not loaded. I'm at my house. I can do whatever I want with my guns. OK, are you surprised the vote passed along party lines even after Buffalo, Uvalde, Tulsa? I mean, really? Zero Republicans on the committee amended their pro-gun rights stance? I'm not surprised. Having dealt with Republicans all these years in Congress on gun issues, it's very clear to me that they're just parroting NRA talking points. They have no new ideas to reduce the epidemic of gun violence. With Democrats, you see that we're putting people over politics and we just passed another major bill to reduce gun violence by raising the age to 21 for which you can purchase assault weapons. We also banned high capacity magazines. We have self storage provisions and we put in an additional offense for straw purchasers and gun trafficking. So we're trying to reduce this epidemic of gun deaths. Republicans have no ideas and people can this November decide what they wanna do in a nationwide election. Let's play one more moment, and this is from that House debate, a pretty emotional message from your Democratic colleague, Lucy McBath. Here it is. My son Jordan was only 17 years old when he was shot by a man with a gun who didn't like the loud music that he was playing. The same racially motivated violence that took my son that murdered 10 black Americans in Buffalo is being replayed with casual callousness and despicable frequency. Since last week, when 19 children were gunned down at their desks, are we okay with this as a nation? Is this the status quo that we all accept? I mean, if not the murder of school kids by assault weapons, will any message get across the aisle? Do you anticipate getting any Republican support when legislation actually goes to the full House for a vote? Uh, first of all, let me say that my heart goes out to the families who are experiencing unimaginable pain uh, mm. in Uvalde, as well as in Tulsa and Buffalo and so many other places across America. And my heart goes out again to Congresswoman Lucy McBath and her loss. In terms of the U.S. Senate, where they're going to get a lot of very good legislation that the House has passed 
with reducing gun violence. I think there are some areas where we could get bipartisan support, including potentially raising the age of 21 to purchase assault weapons, red flag laws, which a number of states have put in and that's shown to reduce gun violence, and some self-storage provision. I think those are areas where we could get some bipartisan compromise. Uh, there is a bipartisan group of nine senators. They're trying to find a way forward on gun safety legislation. We know President Biden certainly supporting their efforts, but sending a strong message to Republicans during his primetime address to the nation on Thursday. Let's listen to part of that. I support the bipartisan efforts that include small group of Democrats and Republican senators trying to find a way. But my God, the fact that the majority of the Senate Republicans don't want any of these proposals even to be debated or come up for a vote, I find unconscionable. We can't fail the American people again. How important is it to keep the pressure on? Are Republicans just kind of hoping Americans will lose focus and move on to the next issues? And to that end, how committed are Democrats to keeping this issue front and center? The NRA and many Republicans want you to feel numb. They want you to feel you're powerless. They want you to feel like you can't do anything to reduce this epidemic of gun deaths. And they are wrong. And I want your viewers and everyone watching to understand that you have the power to help change public sentiment. There's also an election happening nationwide in less than six months. You can express your views at the ballot box. You can go help gun safety organizations. Uh, you can engage in social media and with your coworkers at work to change hearts and minds. There are lots of things that individuals can do to try to change their public sentiment that we have in America. And with public sentiment changing towards gun violence prevention, I believe we can get some legislation passed this year. From your lips to Congress's ears, let us hope. Thank you very much, my friend. Very good to see you, California Congressman Ted Lieu. Meantime,